Well, howdy, howdy, ho! Today we're going to be talking about multiplying using partial products again, but more specifically, we're going to be using two digit by two digit because in fourth grade you need to know how to multiply two digits by two digits. But the first thing I want to do is show you again how this is like area model, how partial product is very similar to area model. So the first thing I want to do is write, see, split these up. So I might put 20 on this side. Make that a little thick. And 25 on the top. Now you, it doesn't matter which way you do it, as long as you have one, because they're both going to be the same. And I can put a multiplication sign here to help me know that I'm multiplying 20 times 25 and trying to find the area. So the first thing I do is draw my lines. <clears throat> Bam! And to do this, I had to you multiply the values. So the value of this 2 is 20, plus the value of this 5 is 5. And so we broke this apart, right? So 20 is like. Well, it's a 20 because you can't, there's no value here, so it can't go beyond that. So this ends up being just two squares. So we have 20 times 20 and 20, because we have 20 this way, times 5. So 20 times 5. And if we counted this section, we see we have 20 this way, 5 this way. So 5 times 20, and it's kind of like a little ray there. So we have two partial products. So we're going to have 20 times 20. Um, how many zeros in my factors? We have two zeros. So two zeros in my product. A lovely little trick. And then we don't have to worry about those zeros anymore. 2 times 2 is going to be 4. So it's going to be 400 for this area. So if we were to count all these individual squares, which would take forever, by the way, it would be 400. Woo! Now this one, we need to find the product, partial product of this area. 5 times 20, how many zeros? We have 1 0 in our factors, 1 0 in our product. 5 times 2 is going to be 10. So we have at least 1 0, I guess. So 10. So our partial products are 400 and 100. So, and now what do I do? I add them because I'm adding all of these squares plus all of these squares. That is why we add the partial products because we're trying to figure out how many squares we have in total. It would make sense to multiply these because we're just adding. We found the total amount of squares in this one, total amount of squares in this one, and we just add those together to get 500. So partial product though, how is partial product the same? So let's look at partial product for this one. All right, so we have 25 times 20. Again, it's easier for me to put the bigger number on top, but with this way, it doesn't really matter. If you're doing two by digit by two by two digit by two digit, you're going to do the same thing. So if I was going to multiply everything by this digit, and we can see why we'd have zero. Multiply everything by this digit, we'd have zero times 5, 0 times 5, and then and we're setting up all those boxes. So how many am I going to have? 1 and 4. So the value of this digit, which is 0, times the value of this digit, which is 20, because it's in the 10 spice. You have two tens equals 20. Now we're going to multiply the value of this digit. The value of this digit, uh, which place value is that in? This is where it's different. This is in the tens place, so this one's going to be 20. It looks almost like a Z, huh? Sorry. 20, and then we have the value of this digit, which is 20, or, or 5, sorry. So 20 times 5, and then last but not least, the value of this digit, which is 20. times the value of this digit, which is also 20. What a coincidence. How interesting. And so again, I'm going to set it all up with addition because I'm adding all of them. So now what I do is I multiply. 0 times 5 is going to be 0. You have 0 groups of 5, we're going to have 0. 0 times 20 is going to be 0 because you have 0 groups of 20, you have 0. 20 times 5, we have 1, 0 in our factors, 
So we're going to have 1, 0 on our product. Two, at least 1, 0. Let me put it that way. 2 times 5 is 10. Try to make up, make sure I line up my place values because then we can mess up on our addition. All right, two, 20 times 20. How many zeros? We have two zeros. And our factors. So our factors have two zeros. Our product's going to have two zeros at least. So we, you know, we can have more depending on the product of these two. 2 times 2 is 4. So now what do I do? I add them up. 0, 0, 1 plus 4 is 5. And so you can see we ended up with the same ones. We had the value of this area, which was 400, so right here, and the value of this one, which was 100, so it's right here. So basically, area model is kind of like partial product. You're breaking it up into little pieces, little chunks, and creating partial products. Partial means part of a whole, and so partial products. All right, so let's go ahead and look at what it would look like without the area model. But So we've seen what it looks like with the area model. Let's do a couple without. So the first thing we look at is 68 times 53. Oh, no, those are huge! I'm just glad I don't have to draw an area model because that would take forever. But with partial product, it's going to be a little bit quicker. All right, so we're going to set it up. Let's put our number, one of these on top, 68. I'm going to start with a larger number because, again, I like the larger number on top. For some reason, it doesn't matter, but I do. In this case, it doesn't matter. All right, times 53. All right, so <clears throat> when I'm doing this, I'm going to set up my problems. So, th so we have three, three. Oh, wait, well, let's uh, go ahead and set up how many problems I'm going to have. I'm going to have three times eight, so that's one. Three times 60, that's two. 50 times 8, which is 3, and this one times this one is 4. So how many problems am I going to set up? I'm going to set up 4, because if you have a 2 digit by 2 digit problem, you're going to end up having 4 different equations. Woo! Alright, so let's see here. Let's go ahead and find put our little partial product. First we have the value of this digit times the value of this digit. So this digit is worth 3, the va has a value of 3. This digit has a value of 8, so we're going to do 8. Then the value of this digit times the value of this digit. We have 3 times what's the value of this digit? 60. 60. Then we need to switch over here to this one. So the value of this digit by the value of that digit it's getting pretty big here. All right, so this 5 is in the tens place, so it has a value of 50. Good old values. Times, what's the value of this digit? 8. So 50 times 8. And then the value of this digit by the value of this digit. Now we're going to do the big ones. 50 times 60. Makes that look a little bit better. 50. That almost looks like a 6. So let's just make this our 60. 60 times 50. There we go. That looks slightly better. That is ferocious. But it's 60 times 50. All right, so first of all, before we multiply, what digits are we multiplying everything by? We're multiplying everything by a 3 and everything by a 5. So what we can do is we can write all our multiples to the side of here so we don't have to worry about that. So let me write all my multiples of 3. So I'm going to start with 3 since that's my smallest multiple of 3. And end up with 3, 6. It's supposed to be a 6. 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, 27, and 30. So this is first 10 multiples of 3. Then let's do, we're multiplying everything else by 5, so let's do our multiples of 5. Start with 5. And end up with 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50. And so now I have my first 10 multiples of 5. So this can help me. So let's look at how this can help me. So let's go ahead and multiply 3 times 8. So 3 times 8, I did multiples of 3, so I'm going to count 8 down. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So 3 times 8 is 24. So this is a little trick to help you if you haven't quite mastered your facts yet. And it's also insurance. All right, that you get the right answer, hopefully. All right, and then it's doing the work ahead of time so you don't have to do it later. 
All right, so 3 times 60, how many zeros in our factor? We have one zero, so one zero in our product. 3 times 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 18. So 3 times 60 is going to be 180. Then five, 50 times 8, how many zeros? We have one zero. And then we're doing multiples of 5, so we're going to count 8 down. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, which is 40. So 5 times 8 is 40. So 50 times 8 is going to be 400. And then 60 times 8, because, yeah, let me write this again, because this is going to be a 6 times 50. All right, how many zeros? We have two zeros. One, two. One, two. We have at least, at least two zeros in our in our product. And then 5 times 6, we did our multiples of 5, so we're going to count 6 down. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, which is going to be 30. So 60 times 50 is 3,000. 3,000! All right, and then we just add 4. 2 plus 8 is 10. 1 plus 1 plus 4 is going to be 6. And then 3 plus nothing else is going to be 3. So our product is going to be, the product of 68 times 53 is 3,604. So that's a couple ways of how you, that's, some, that's a way you can solve a two-digit by two-digit number using partial product. So what I want you to do is I want you to pause. You're going to pause the video. Pause it, pause it, pause it, and you're going to solve these two, this problem right here, 57 times 98. So the first thing you should have done is set it up like this. You had 98, I put 98 on top, this is bigger, it doesn't matter, but it just helps me. 98 times 57, and then I have four different problems, four different partial products that I'm going to make. So go ahead, and then if you haven't paused it yet, go ahead and pause and see if you can set it up from here. Okay, the next thing I did is set my problem, 6, 7, 7 times 8, because the value of this is 7, the value of this is 8, 7 times 90, and then the value of this 5, which is 50, 50 times 8, and then 50 times the value of that 9 is 90. So I set it up like this. And next, I wrote all my multiples. I'm multiplying everything by 7, so I wrote all my multiples of 7, which sometimes can be kind of hard remembering those 7s. And then multiples of 5, I wrote all those down here as well, up to 10 times. All right, so let me go ahead and solve it. 7 times 8 is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 56. Good. 7 times 90, 1, 0 here. And 7 times 9 is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 63. Making that 630. 50 times 8, how many zeros? 1. 8, 5 times 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Making 400. And then 50 times 90, two zeros in our factor, so two zeros in our product. 5 times 9, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 45. Make 4,500. 4, now we just simply add those. We have 6 in our 1's place, 8 in our 10's place. 6 plus 4 is 10, plus 5 is 15. One in our thousands place. All right, one plus four is going to be five. So five thousand five hundred eighty-six is our product, and so that's how you do it. Now I want you to write your own two-digit by two-digit problem, and you're going to solve it on the left side using partial product. And then I want you to show your parent or someone else how you can use partial products to solve it. Now again, all of your partial products will have all of your two by two digit numbers will have four different little partial products that you're making. Um, so four different little equations to the side and then you're going to write the partial products here. All right, And then you add them all up. So show that you're someone how to do that. All right, so that's it. Solving two digit by two digit problems using partial products, which is my favorite way. Um, so And it shows you how it breaks up. And again, it is very similar to the area model, which is a pictorial representation of what you're actually doing. All right, so that's it. Keep solving those problems.